You're probably here because you want to become a Golang microservices developer, but you're not quite sure how to get started. Do you want a system that actually works? Well, in this video, I'll walk you through the system, what to learn, where to go, where to get free resources, how to build those skills, and most importantly, how to start making money. So how to build your career and become a freelancer and even more by learning Go microservices development skills. So you can get started on your first projects and grow from there. Now, why should you trust me with this? I've helped hundreds of developers get started as freelancers and business owners over the past 10 years. By the way, if you're into content like this, please hit the subscribe button and click all the buttons under the bell notification thing, whatever it is now, it keeps changing so that you get updates forever on these videos and you can always opt out later if you don't like it. So Go is one of the most powerful and efficient tools in modern development. So it's one of the best skills, one of the best languages you can learn right now. So let's start with some fundamentals. First, you need the basics. Learn the Go syntax, including its unique features like Go routines and channels for concurrency. Then you need to understand how Go handles types, functions, and error management. Then you need to understand core microservices concepts. So you need to grasp the principles of microservices, including scalability, fault tolerance, and decentralized data. Then you need to familiarize yourself with inter-service communication patterns. They need to get into HTTP and REST APIs to learn how to build and consume RESTful APIs using Go's net HTTP package. They need to understand HTTP methods, status codes, and headers. They need to learn about databases, which is not really related to this video, but you know, it's MySQL and NoSQL databases using Go libraries like GoRM and Database SQL. They need to get into communication protocols, so implement gRPC or message queues to manage communication between services. Now, you don't have to know everything that that you have to go learn. Basically, what you can do is you can get some free resources on where to learn all this tech stuff. It's all free. It's available. You only need to pay for something like a code camp or something like that. If you cannot manage your own time, if you cannot sit down and build out your own lesson plan, same as you've done with previous languages before, if you can't do that, then you have to go pay someone five to $15,000 to, you know, babysit you through the process. However, here are some free resources which are most excellent for learning everything yourself and for free. First, I would go to the official documentation. They're called the Go Docs, and they're concise and beginner friendly, covering everything from installation to advanced topics. Then I would go and read some books and articles. So resources like a tour of Go, so which is on tour.golang.org. These provide interactive lessons and blogs like Gopher Academy, and they're packed with insights. This is all free. You could just go there. It's, I think Google made all of this. It's all free. You could just go and learn everything. Then I would go to GitHub and explore open source Go projects to see how experienced developers structure their code. So then I would go to community forums to so join Go communities on Reddit, Discord, or a Stack Overflow to ask questions and learn from others. So now my favorite part as what almost all my videos, let's talk about how to actually get started with getting your clients and how to get started as a freelancer and get your first projects. For those of us who are a little bit entrepreneurial, just a little bit, starting an Upwork or Fiverr is a great way to get started in the field. So here's how to maximize your success. First, you need to optimize your profile, highlight your experience in Go and microservices development from the point of view of your clients. So what are they looking for and how can this be solved with what you know and what you know how to do based on your previous projects. Use a very good photo of yourself and Google how to make a professional photo with your iPhone and then just make one. It takes 15 minutes if you're not very good at this. So get a decent photo of yourself, put on a shirt, not a t-shirt like what I'm wearing, but a shirt. You want to mention your GitHub, you want to mention your certificates related to Go or microservices and other languages, and you want to create targeted proposals that are targeting the types of projects that you know how to you know, solve. So tailor each proposal to the client's specific needs. Mention how your skills can directly solve their specific problems. If it's all super technical, you're not really going to get a project. If it's ultra targeted to them and what they want, the client, then you can get projects. Otherwise, you have to go get a job if you never learn how to do this. If you don't know and never learn how to connect specific problems and business problems that clients have to this tech stuff, you will never be able to freelance. So you need to learn how to do that. You need to be able to learn how to read a client's non-tech description of what they want and then connect that to your tech abilities, which is basically how to do sales, how to consult. This sounds very complicated, but this is a learnable skill. If you want to learn this, just contact me at businessmanner.com uh, or watch some of my other videos where I go into more detail. Initially, you can 
provide entry-level packages, which doesn't mean it's cheap, it just means the projects are relatively simple and you can refuse to do anything overly complicated. And once you build up some credibility with reviews and you know how many projects you've done, maybe hire some people to help you, then you can build more complicated projects that extend over multiple months or even years. The idea is you need to stack a bunch of these clients as a freelancer or agency owner. Agency owner is basically a freelancer who has developers working for him. Uh, then you go and you get a bunch of these retainers and that's how you get a business and it, business is way more valuable than just getting a job doing this uh unless it's a job at google because <laughs> google if you know how to do this stuff and you get actually manage to get a job at google as unlikely as that is because they have infinite applicants then you can actually make more than a lot of freelancers but unless it's google uh it's pretty much better to just have an agency so focus on getting five star reviews on Upwork and Fiverr, if you get started on Fiverr at the same time, and deliver projects on time and maintain clear communication with the client speaking their language. And ask satisfied clients to leave detailed reviews all of them have to do it. They have to agree up front before working with you that once you complete a project, they leave detailed reviews to highlight how good you've done. They need to leverage keywords on your profile. So use terms like go developer, microservices expert, and concurrency specialist in your profile and job proposals to appear in relevant search results. Upwork is basically a search engine for freelancers. So you need to work with these keywords. If you don't do this with the skills and what's on your profile and what's your proposal, you're not really gonna do well on Upwork. So with consistent daily effort on Upwork, so sending 10, 15 proposals a day, you can get clients relatively easily on these platforms. It'll cost some money, but it's definitely worth it. Now, what I want you to do if you are interested in this is I want you to click on the video in the description where we go into more detail on how Upwork actually works. So you can go there and get started. Upwork is getting a little bit more competitive these days, but it's still very viable. If you know how to learn by yourself, you learn how to learn new skills, and you can sit down and do basic work like sending proposals, Upwork is still a fantastic way to get started as a freelancer. So go into the description and click on one of the videos that will help you out on how to get started with your first projects.